So last year in 2023, I shared with you what is in my wallet. So I thought I'd do an update for 2024, not just my physical wallet, but also the things on my phone, because a lot of the time now I'm going out with just my phone for little trips around town. I'm not worrying about having my wallet on me so much, but I do still have a physical wallet and I still think it's important because there are some things which you cannot transfer to your phone. So let's start with that. What have I got in my physical wallet? Well, I've got a couple of payment cards. I've only got three. For those of you who regularly follow me, you'll know I've got about 20 plus debit cards and maybe half a dozen credit cards as well. Obviously, I'm not going to carry all of them around with me. I don't need to carry them all around with me, but there are some that I want to have. Again, most of the time, as we'll talk about in a minute, I am using my digital wallet, but occasionally it's useful to have a physical card as well. The main one that I've got, the main one that I spend with is the American Express Vitality credit card. And this is one that a lot of you might not have heard of. And that's because you probably can't get it. So I won't spend too much time on this. I've written more detail about it over in the article that accompanies uh, this content. But this is for only people who have Vitality insurance, health insurance or life insurance. Uh, via work last summer, I was put onto Vitality health insurance. So I was eligible for this credit card. A couple of good reasons why I went for it and why I use it more than any other card that's available. There's a hundred pound bonus for the first time when you spend uh, two thousand pounds in the first three months, which is a nice, easy one to trigger. And you're eligible for it, even if you've had an Amex or have an Amex in your name. So that's a nice little work around there for a nice little bonus. But also if you do exercise, you earn vitality points every month, then you can boost the cash back rate. So I'm getting the equivalent of 1.5% back uh, most months with this card. Uh, if you don't manage to get all your steps in or do your exercise, then you might get less points and get less of a boost. So in a couple of months, because I was ill over Christmas, I might drop down to 1.25%. But as long as you are getting the exercise in, then that is probably an unbeatable cashback card right now. There is a restriction with it, and that is that the boosted cashback is only valid on the first £1,000 you spend every month. So really, uh, over spending over a grand, you want to spend on a different card. And I do, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, I've got a backup credit card just in case I do need to use a physical card. I can't use my digital wallet and they don't take American Express and they want that Section 75 protection. And in those instances, I've got my Barclay card rewards credit card. Again, I've spoken that quite a lot with you guys. And the big bonus here is it's fee free to use overseas and you get 0.25% cash back. So it's not a major card I'm using, but it's there as a backup or for using overseas. Now, the final card I've got is a different one to last year. Last year, I had my Curve card. And Curve, for those of you who don't know about it, is a really great idea. And it used to be really, really good. It basically means you have a single card and behind it, you can connect any number of Visa or MasterCard debit or credit cards. So I could have this card and before or after payment, I could change which card I was going to use. It was really, really handy. Over the years, they degraded the proposition to the extent now that you can hardly add any cards to the free version. You can hardly use any of the fancy features like go back in time. So I ditched it last summer. And if you still use it, I recommend you ditch it as well. I certainly wouldn't be paying for it. However, I still need a card. And this again, a reason to have a physical wallet rather than going completely digital. For the very, very, very rare times that I need to get money out of a cash machine, I need a debit card. My main bank is Starling Bank. So I've got my Starling debit card. I do not use it for anything at all other than those rare occasions where I take uh, money out of a cash machine. So they are the three payment cards I have in my wallet. We'll come to the digital wallet later on with more information in there. I have got a couple of other cards, which uh, again, you can't put on your phone just yet. So another reason to have them in my uh, physical wallet and carry a physical wallet. Uh, one of them is my driving license. You don't actually have to have your driving license on you. Uh, if you get stopped or something like that, uh, you have got time to actually submit that to the police station things. You don't have to have it, but it's always useful to have a form of ID. The other, uh, when was it? Just before Christmas, I was out with some friends in London. And even though I am obviously over the age of 18 or 21, I was required to show some ID to get in. So it's handy to have some actual proper ID on me uh, when those rare occasions where it's needed. And the other thing I've got is an NUS card. Well, now it's called a totem card. Uh, basically a student discount. You might be thinking, Andy, you're not a student. You've got a job. I know you've got a job because I see you on the channel. I listen to you on the podcast. Uh, I know you aren't a student. I have, for years ago, there was a workaround, a hack where anyone could get a student card via um, an online course. Sadly, it's much harder. It's not impossible. It's harder to get these now. But if you had one of those offers before, then you can get often get an alumni card. So that's basically what I've got. And it's a pretty decent one to have. Again, I don't use it as much as in previous years, 
but certainly every now and again having that uh, is well worth having it physically on me to save me some cash now beyond that what else have i got this again these are things which you can't put on a phone i've got a little bit of cash on me i don't know how long i've had this cash on my wallet potentially since last summer i've got a 20 pound note a 10 pound note and two pound 30 in coins uh, it's hardly gets touched there are occasions though when places are cash only i don't go out of my way to have cash on me um but if i've got it i'm not in a rush to maybe put it into a bank for a small amount obviously if i had more than that it'd be silly sitting here i'm better to go and pay it in to an actual bank account so it's sitting there i can earn interest it's protected if something was to go wrong things like that but i've got a little bit of money in there i've got a handful of gift vouchers now most gift vouchers when we come to in a minute i've actually got digital on my phone but some of them you can't do that again a reason to have a physical wallet i've got a john lewis credit card which I don't use so much anymore but that pays you in paper john lewis vouchers and although my local supermarket i go to more than any other is waitrose you can't use these power vouchers at the till without calling someone over the self-service till so at some point i need to just go to a man's till a staff till and use the vouchers there to get them out of my wallet uh, i've got a couple of kind of loyalty things in fact if you watched the video i did or read the article that i did on this last year there's not much change from this. Uh, there is a restaurant that I love called Dishoom, mainly in London, but they're branching out all over the country. Someone told me there's one in Brighton now. I know there's one in Scotland and a few other places. Uh, if you um, eat there, uh, you get a stamp. If you get five stamps, you get a free breakfast naan. So I've currently got uh, four stamps on these cards. So I need another meal there before I can claim a free breakfast. I've got a voucher code from WH Smith, a voucher sort of gift card. It gives you 25% off greeting cards. Uh, they do this most years, actually, around sort of October time. It's valid for a year. So it's quite a good way to save money on greeting cards. Again, couldn't have that on my phone. I've got a photo of my wife. I've got a plaster, probably the same plaster that I had in my wallet 12 months ago when I did this roundup. And I've got a handful of receipts. Generally, with receipts, I get rid of them. But there's some business expenses that I need to claim. So they're still in there. But once I get rid of them, uh, they will be gone. So again, not a huge amount in there you think about things that are missing well where are they well they are all on my phone let's start off with uh the payment cards shall we now the one that i have set as my default for payment is that same amex vitality that i mentioned before because again i do the bulk or the initial spending is always going to be on the amex vitality so i use this really more than i use the physical card the cards there was a backup but most of the time i'm using my phone after this, uh, and if I don't want to go past that £1,000 or they don't accept American Express, I'm still using the Chase debit card. This is giving 1% cash back. We don't know how much longer that's going to last. They keep extending it for existing customers, changing the term slightly. At the moment, for me, as one of the people who took out a Chase debit card when it first opened up, I've got until the end of May as the current rules apply. If you've opened yours up at any point in the last 12 months, well, then you'll have at least 12 months uh, from that date before it ends. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep it going in some form or another. But that is the one that I go to for my other payments. Uh, I have got then loads of other cards added beyond that, which I use on occasion, quite rare. Now, I've actually got 16 cards added to my phone right now. and I kind of stopped adding them there. I can't imagine why anyone's going to want to have more than 16 on there. Potentially, there's another two or three I could add on, but I've got too many as it is. But the reason I've got all those extra cards added on, and I always use them very, 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 very rarely, is that sometimes uh, some banks have special cashback offers which are related to specific retailers, and you need to use that debit card in order to trigger it. In all fairness, it's pretty much when I'm buying train tickets via LNER. That's the most of the time I use it. But other offers will come and go where I do take advantage as well. So I've got uh, Monzo, Barclays, uh, Halifax, Lloyds, Santander. Uh, there are a couple of others as well where I've got that just in case I want to use a debit card to claim one of those offers. Again, it does require me though to be using a physical machine I can go to or for the, uh, uh, the, the checkout on my phone to have the option to connect to Apple Pay. If not, then I'd need a physical card. But in most likelihood, those sort of situations, if I'm buying online, I'm at home, I can get the card out of where I keep all those other debit cards. I also use my digital phone wallet, the Apple wallet, in order to uh, take advantage 
of the Halifax reward hack, which I've detailed before. This is basically, if you have the Halifax reward current account, if you spend 500 pounds on the Halifax debit card every single month, then you can get a five pound reward or a free cinema ticket. There are some other conditions, but that is the core one that you need to fulfill, which for most people, okay, I spend 500 pounds debit card, that's easy enough. I actually use it. And the reason I've added it to my Apple wallet is a bit of a hack, an extra hack. Effectively, I go to my Monzo account. I create a Monzo me link, which I send to myself. And they say, I pay 500 pounds, how much I want to pay. And then I pay it via connecting to my Apple wallet and the connected Halifax debit card within there. Adds 500 pounds from a debit card to my Monzo. Triggers that reward for me, that five pounds. And that 500 pounds I've got in my Monzo for me to transfer back to my uh, any of my different accounts. I have detailed this Halifax reward hack and how you can do it with three different accounts in a separate article and video. But that's a good reason for uh, another little hack for my digital wallet. I've got some credit cards in there as well. I mentioned that uh, Barclay Card Rewards, that's on there as well. Uh, the John Lewis Partnership Credit Card, that's on there as well. Again, not really using them, mainly that Vitality, Amex and the Chase, but they are there just in case amongst all those cards. Now, the other big thing that I've got on here are my loyalty cards. Now, you can add most loyalty cards to your digital wallet. I choose instead to add them to a different app called Stow Card, and that's because they're all in one place. Uh, as long as you can scan a barcode, you can add that digital card on there. And I prefer doing that. I know some of you would probably prefer using that digital wallet itself, but I like have them all in one place. And it basically means I don't carry any little loyalty cards with me that can be digitized. Also within Stow Card though, and this again, why I like using it, is you can add uh, anything with a barcode. And I've added my library card. I've added a few other bits and pieces, my gym membership, things like that. But I've also... Uh, added any gift card that I've got. Instead of only handing, ha carrying around in my wallet gift cards which cannot be uh, scanned, scan the barcode into Stow Card, and it basically means that when I buy these discounted gift cards, uh, which we've covered on the podcast, the YouTube channel, and the website before, from the likes of Hyperjar and Jam Donut and Cheddar, you get them at a lower rate then I've got them to spend when I'm out and about. So actually, I tend to sort of buy those supermarket ones as the Waitrose and scan them from my Stow Card wallet. I can change the amount so I can keep track of how much is on there each time. And it's a nice, simple way without having to carry loads around with me, without the risk of losing them if I lost my wallet. I've got them all there for me. And that is what's in my physical and digital wallet in 2024. I'd love to know what you guys are carrying around with you. Have you managed to slim line uh, what you have in your wallet. Do you even carry a physical wallet? It's everything in your phone. Let me know in the comments below. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these videos here for more ways to get the most from your bank.